Welcome once again. It's time for Off the Press. It's where we have a quick review of the major stories making headlines across the country this morning. We, of course, before the end of this, will be joined by our guest, uh, uh, G. Day Johnson, having a little issues connecting with him this morning. But we're, of course, good to go. The show must go on. Yes. So, yes, starting with stories on the Punch newspapers this morning, let's see what we can find and share with you. NIMC workers accused federal government of covering up COVID-19 in agency. Um, and that is one, you know, that is a huge shocker. We'll talk about it. Buhari Oshimbajo and SGF to take uh, COVID-19 vaccine on live telecast. Also on the punch this morning, federal government suspends power tariff uh, hike, says 55% uh, users subsidized. And also poor power supply strangulating manufacturing. And that's from the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Uh, top of the paper, you can find over there 5,552 megawatts power generation successfully transmitted to discos. And that's from the TCN, Transmission Company of Nigeria. Um, other stories on the Punch newspapers this morning. You must have heard about the fuel tanker crash um, in Lagos yesterday. And that's uh, one of the things you might find over there. Uh, the pictures are right there on your screen. Uh, we also can find here Lagos building 10 oxygen uh, tents to battle COVID-19. And that's from the governor, Babajide Sonwolu. Uh, also, Ogun Church ex-guard arrested for stealing offering box. Oh, all right. Um, I would I would want him to be forgiven anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, because that's what that's what the you know Christianity teaches, I guess. All right, court decides Obaseki's fate of alleged certificate forgery on Saturday. Amotekun probes alleged killing of three or your youths. That's also in the news this morning. And one uh, last one I'll share. It says here nude party Kaduna arraigns PDP spokesman and others for attempted adultery. That's interesting, actually. Mm. Um, I'm going to just quickly share thoughts on the um, federal government covering up COVID-19 in the agency story. Um, uh, these, of course, are allegations. Uh, there's expected that there would be more conversations about this, you know, and maybe staff of the NIMC would be able to share why they think um, this way or, you know, what, you know, they, they know that the federal government is not saying in what ways that um, COVID-19 may be very, very present among their colleagues that the federal government is not revealing. Um, but one thing, you know, that I feel we've always lacked in Nigeria is that level of accountability where um, the government takes responsibility for every Nigerian life and takes responsibility for failing to protect every Nigerian life. Um, in saner climes, you know, it's, it's expected that you would see people say that if PPEs are not provided for health workers and for government workers. It is the government's failure and the government should take responsibility for whatever happens to those people. Um, but currently we have the NIMC workers on strike because they say, well, we don't have protective equipment and we can't work under these conditions. Um, you don't expect us to be crowded by hundreds, you know, daily and, you know, and, um, you know, without any level of protection. And so we're not willing to put our lives, you know, at risk simply because we need to register uh, phone lines uh, for mm -hmm. the Nigerian government. And so, you know, it's, it's really about how much accountability and how much responsibility the Nigerian government takes for every Nigerian life and for every staff who is going to be held responsible if um, somebody dies, if any of these workers dies because they weren't protected enough while carrying out their jobs? Do we have a society where the government can say, um, or people can say, hey, the government failed to protect Nigerians here and to be sued? Now, on this on this issue, really, uh, written the story on our national dailies, we saw the president of the Association of C Civil Servants in Nigeria saying the issue was that they discovered COVID-19 in three staff that work at the NIMC and that they were told that these staff proceeded on vacation. But they came back and, you know, interrogations and, you know, they found out that these guys had COVID-19 and were in isolation centers. So they're accusing the government of covering it up, saying, you know that these people had COVID-19. They came back from isolation, so to speak, and you're putting other people at risk. You know, adequate protective gear is not provided 
COVID-19 allowances, hazard allowances provided to other health frontline workers are not provided for us. You've given a deadline. About 164 million Nigerians who have not registered for their name are thronging, you know, offices of NIMC nationwide. So there's so much at play here, you know, the health risk and all of that. We'll find out just uh, how much, how deep this issue runs Absolutely. when we discuss it in detail with our guests on the program. Let's uh, let's turn now to the next. Uh, would you like to touch on any um, story? We we'll probably would just, you know, quickly we... also to share thoughts on the. Um, you know, I think we already mentioned the president and vice president and. Of course, uh, the SGF taking the COVID-19 vaccine on live uh, television, mm -hmm. and I was saying yes, it's a good, you know, it's a good thing, uh, mostly because of uh, how much it encourages other people to, you know, want to, you know, um, take the vaccine. It also encourages other people to understand that COVID-19 is not um, fake. It's not a, it's not a hoax, you know. And um, if the president, with all the millions of followers that he has in northern Nigeria and across the country. Um, will take the vaccine on live television, then yes, it will encourage a lot of people. But the 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 hitch, you know, and uh, you know, it's what I've seen some people talk about or complain about really is with the number of vaccines that are available for Nigerians. We will bring up these things as part of our conversations this morning. Um, we're talking about 100,000 vaccines that, you know, they are expecting at the end of January for 200 million people. Yes, obviously, it's not going to go around you know, 200 million people, but... Um, it's, it's really going to create conversations about why just 100,000? Is that what we can afford? Is that what has been given to us? Um, what was the process of getting these 100,000 vaccines? Why couldn't we get 10 million? Um, the government is also saying, you know, talking about vaccinating 40% of the population in about a year. Is that really possible um, with the, the pace, uh, the, you know, that we're working with? Um, and so there's, there's numerous questions about, yes. you know, these vaccines. And also, most Nigerians would say, why do we have, you know, a select few getting the vaccine first? Why politicians? Why, you know, it, it almost starts to seem like the Nigerian thing where, you know, a select few, you know, the, the, um, um, the ones who are fortunate, the ones who are privileged, rather, will get the vaccines before the regular Nigerian. I think, I think there are two sides of the coin to this argument, you know, with vaccines and public office holders taking them first. First things first, there are a group of people who say, let's see if the vaccine is real, let the president take it live on air. Mm -hmm. Or you go on social media and you see people saying, even if the president takes the vaccine, so to speak, I don't think there'll be a vaccine. You know, they just want to deceive us. So I don't think, any, and even if the president comes out to take this vaccine on air, some people, or a lot of people will believe that because pe some people are very set in their opinion that COVID-19 is not real and that the vaccines are unsafe for them or that it's 666 is the antichrist. There's so much conspiracy yeah. theory out there regarding the virus and the vaccines. Good luck. Good luck to those ones. Good luck to those ones because the facts are clear and people are dying in Africa. Yes. And generally and lastly, um, Amotekun, um, which, you know, is a part of our conversation this morning with the death of three um, or your uh, um, citizens or people in all your state. Um, it, it was started for, you know, as a great cause. And I'm not, you know, trying to shoot it down this morning, but I, I believe that it's not too early for us to remind the that why they are they, responsible why they were for, you know, yes. you know, for uh, protection of lives and, and property of Nigerians. And you sh cannot turn into the cancer that Nigerians are running away from. You cannot turn into, you know, a, a security agency that Nigerians, you know, have, you know, always questioned. You cannot start doing the same things that Nigerians have always complained about. So it's not too early to remind them. And I'll just leave it there. It's just, it's just such an irony that, you know, it's just such an irony that uh, organizations or institutions that are aimed to secure Nigerians, you know, turn around and be the ones that hurt us. Anyway, let's see what uh, the outcome of this investigation would be when, you know, the police eventually releases a statement. Let's now go to uh, the Nation newspaper. Still talking about COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, it says 30 minutes COVID-19 test kits for hospitals, says PTF. 30 minutes COVID-19 test kits for hospitals. A story here about the NIN registration says NIMC workers strike stalls NIN registration and EFCC to arrest touts. Three feared killed in Amoteco or your clash. Two million Nigerians are IDPs, says Minister. There's one about, uh, you know, the Lagos State, the NSAS protests, you know, vandalization of public property. Yeah. Um, the Lagos State Governor, Son Ulu, here saying rebuilding Lagos will take a long time. 
Many other stories here, including that of the U.S. elections. Trump surrenders after failed coup. Okay, we'll see just how, how detailed, uh, we'll find out details of that in the news. Uh, Pelosi and others seek president's ouster. Electricity tariff strike um, hike on hold. So the minister is saying it's a minor adjustment and they're holding off implementation of the um, electricity hike to the end of January. Also, Ghana, Ghana elections, condemnation trails, soldiers' invasion of Ghana parliament. I don't know why this has become an occurrence right now in global politics. Uh, first the US, now Ghana. <clears throat> But this has been condemned. And uh, those are basically the, the main stories on the front page of the nation th this morning. Okay. I think taking a look at uh, more specifically on this one about uh, rebuilding Lagos, rebuilding Lagos, there's, it's, it's such a shame to see how that NSAS protest was hijacked. And I don't think this conversation can ever be over. Maybe not until we're able to get justice for victims of you know, police brutality, SARS brutality, and we're able to just put in place or restore the infrastructure that was damaged. Millions of Naira you know, went down the drain when hoodlums allegedly you know, took over the protest and uh, you know, saw that uh, lots of infrastructure, BRT buses burnt, public infrastructure destroyed. But anyway, Let's, uh, let's hope that we're able to move forward this year the, uh, from that. So, so talking about that one, you know, and uh, this has always been my perspective. Yes, it was entirely wrong that that level of damage was done to, you know, the beautiful Lagos. Um, those young people, you know, who you know, were violent and destructive, not the, you know, peaceful protesters now, um, should be blamed for that. But at the same time, you know, there is also, I would always remind um, everyone that the government also holds a very, very large share of that blame for, first of all, having that many young people uneducated and bored and angry. And idle. Um, and idle. Um, it's, it's a failure of government that, you know, created that number of people that were idle and uneducated and couldn't be peaceful and, and um, understand, the, you know, the, the, the idea of a peaceful protest. It, it's the government's failure that has left that many people on the streets doing nothing um, and that level of hunger, you know, existed amongst them. It is also a failure of government to not be able to protect Lagos State when a curfew was declared, you know. So when you, when you say, oh, there's going to be a curfew, everybody stay home at this time, and you have no plans for security, you have no plans to protect the state, it's also the failure of government, you know, that that happened. And so, yes, they, you know, were unruly at that level, but government still holds a very, very large percentage of the blame. And when, yes, you, you talk about how it's going to take a long time to rebuild Lagos, sorry. Um, but these are the effects of a, a, a long, 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 long time of anger and frustration and hunger that has existed among millions and millions of Nigerians. And so when they eventually get a chance to express themselves, sometimes, unfortunately, it might be this way. Um, and you have to take responsibility for it. And uh, just imagine the protest that didn't turn out the way it was hijacked by, you know, hoodlums. The social changes, the political changes that might have occurred in Lagos if that protest was not disturbed, you know, because in just a few, in just a few days, SWAT was, or rather uh, SARS, was disbanded. So it, we can only just imagine how Nigeria would be in January 2021 if that protest went on without the external influence. But I guess uh, we'll just have to hold on. But I, I would also give it you know, some credit. You know, it did get to achieve some things. Yes, it um, did. Like yes, you yes, said, um, um, SARS is you know, out of the way. Um, now, still, still on this COVID-19 story, there's, there's, there's details here on the front page of the Nation newspaper saying over 1 million Nigerians have been tested for COVID-19. Uh, we're saying that uh, about, you know, Atiku, Atiku has been listed as the first Nigerian yes. to be vaccinated, but I don't think that's true. I have friends in the U.S. who had COVID-19 that received the Pfizer vaccine, but I think they mean to say the first prominent Nigerian to speak to have received the vaccination. Federal government plans uh, oxygen intervention in states, no cause for alarm over new virus strains, no information on virus expiry dates, and politicians won't get vaccination priority. You know, still still circling back to the, you know, the issue of politicians and taking vaccines, you know, just trying to explain that 
or what, what the ministries and agencies are trying to put out is that the government, it's not like they're getting a priority. It's just to prove, for them to take it and prove to you that the vaccines are safe. But good luck to anyone who doesn't believe but that. But they would also argue that, um, you know, the, the leaders would always be given some level of, you know, consideration and, and priority, you know, which you can't really argue with. It's not just in Nigeria, you know, across the world, you know, it's almost the same thing also. Um, and, you know, that would be their argument. You know, I'm, I'm only just expecting that, yes, you know, there will be Nigerians who would say, no, nah, man, if, you, if you're going to vaccinate, you know, the population, then, I, then let it be everywhere. And another fear that I have is um, I've seen, you know, that private laboratories charge as much as 50,000 naira for a COVID-19 test. As much as 50,000. Um, exactly. So um, if we eventually get vaccines, are we confident that these vaccines will be given out free to Nigerians or people have to pay you know their life savings to uh, get a vaccine exactly this, um, this, it's, it's this a regular is a concern Nigerian. this is a concern I mean one of the guests we interviewed one of the doctors we interviewed on the breakfast uh, yesterday or so talked about corruption there's there's you know this issue of corruption in Nigeria and he, he mentioned that when these vaccines are eventually in the country available in the country are Nigerians in dying of it truly going to get it or just like like donations and you know aids and kits that are written explicitly not for sale and you eventually find those items in the Being market sold. for sale yeah. would these vaccines eventually end up on the shelves of pharmaceutical pharmaceuticals you know on pharmacies and people charging exorbitant amounts for them you so, know so so we're hoping not um, but you know what we're talking or what I'm saying this morning is you know based on you know the Nigerian experience, you know, and how things mostly play out here. Um, there was, there is always going to be, you know, that person who wants to make money off, you know, some of these things. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can beat it this time. Um, I'm also going to quickly share on the electricity tariff act that has been suspended. Um, you, you know, which you know some people would celebrate. It's been suspended to the end of January, I believe. Um, but this is, for me, a stereotype. It's, 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 a, it's, it's. It's the way that some of these agencies in Nigeria behave. They test the waters, see people's reaction when, you know, it's not looking like, you know, they will be, you know, people will they accept, would accept it. it. Then they suspend it for a bit and then eventually bring it back, you know, when they can find a good enough excuse to force it down people's throats. Um, the question that I would always ask is, was this not thought through in the first place when someone decided, oh, we're going to increase the hike in electricity uh, tariffs? Was it not thought through? You know, before you now suspend it a couple of days later, didn't you think maybe this is the wrong time? The reasons it has been suspended now, didn't anybody think of those at first? And so if anybody did, then why did they go ahead with it in the first place? You know, was it simply just to see how Nigerians would react and then yes. you know, know whether Another to take it back Another question, very important, is why doesn't the government institute policies, make laws that everybody will literally clap and commend the government for? Why must the government take actions, proactive or reactive, that, you know, would generate anger, that would generate outrage, get people on the streets, get people on social media, chatting angrily and condemning the government? I can't wait to see when the government does take proactive steps and takes, you know, makes laws and policies that everyone can be grateful and thankful to the government for. Right. But let's now move on to the next paper. We'll have the Guardian newspaper here. It's on, uh, you know, the economy. Economists here seeking policy overhaul to aid growth. It said Nigeria's 2021 growth projection falls below African and global average. Prophet Satella calls for policy to address 10-year needs. Federal government should leverage youth potential World Bank consultant advises a professor underscores the need to develop local industries. This one cannot be overstated. So there's a need here to overhaul uh, policies to aid the growth of the Nigerian economy. Also here on the Guardian newspaper, it says how airlines, travel agencies, others share five billion naira palliative and anger as NIMC strike stalls NIN registration. Northern Christians and group slams GNI, others over attack on KUKA. It's, it's so sad how, you know, for this issue specifically, you know, someone writes an opinion piece and we can all see the merits, we can all see the facts, we can all see the truth, but then you have uh, government agencies speaking up against it. You know, if you're not pro-government, you need to shut up. We have that kind of a uh, mentality here, and that's so sad. Here, courts decides Obasaki's alleged certificate forgery case January 9th, and that will be tomorrow. Government suspends implementation of new electricity tariff to January 31st. 
and Congress affirms Biden's victory after U.S. capital violence. All right. Uh, well, it's always expected that there would be dissenting voices and, you know, not everybody would agree with Bishop uh, Matthew Kuka and not everybody would agree with his uh, perspectives, you know, but, you know, in, in the midst of all those who don't agree or who decide to attack him, I'm sure in themselves, they also know what the truth is. So whether you, you, you know, openly agree with him or you agree with him inside your heart, you know, and then on the outside, you, you know, write articles condemning him and attacking him. I'm sure that inside of you, you know what the truth is. Um, and you know, you know where it bites you. You know, you know where you know the things that he's saying um, actually do make a lot of sense. You know, so I, I normally would just say um, it's expected that they, you know not everybody has to agree with you know with you. Um, before we go, also once again, NIMC, not NMC, electricity tariff hike. Yes. Hike. What's what's special about the thirty first of January? I mean, what what would change by then? Would Nigerians have more money then? Would Nigerians be able to afford electricity better then? Are they going to be, um, like you know, our guest said yesterday, are they going to be palliatives? Are they going to be you know, ways that the government has come into it and ensure that it is now you know, um, okay for Nigerians to afford these things? There's no difference between now and 31st of January. Indeed. Absolutely. There is, it's, it's just about two weeks or maybe three weeks maximum. Three weeks. Um, and I don't see how it's going to be different. You know, Except if, if they're saying now, that they're taking time to, you know, try to see how they can amend it to favor Nigerians. But now it's just, it's just a suspension. The last increment was suspended for two weeks and then it was brought back and then it stuck. So the suspension never really, really makes any difference. Indeed. If we're, you know, referring What's to even history. worse is that in that NIMC statement, they're saying that by June 2021, Nigerians should expect to pay more for power. But that's, uh, that's where we'll draw the curtains here on uh, Off the Press on Plus TV Africa, The Breakfast. Stick around with us, and when we return, we'll be giving you updates on interesting things that happened this day, January 8th, in history.